Hi again, everybody, and welcome to Inside Golf. I'm Harry Donahue, and coming up on today's show, we're going to look back at the more than 100-year history of the unique golf association right in Philadelphia. It is the East Falls Golf Association. Chris Kalmeyer, who is a real student of the game, former resident of East Falls, and our historian, Pete Trenna, will look back a big part of golf's past in Philadelphia. Also coming up, Rachel Riley from Valley Forge Tourism has an idea for a great family staycation. That is coming up next as well, right here on Inside Golf. Inside Golf is presented by Destination Monco Golf. 54 courses, 300,000 yards. Check them out at moncogolf.com. Buy the first tee of Philadelphia. The first tee helps young men and women become better golfers, but most important, better people. Get involved. Visit thefirstteephiladelphia.org. By the Golf Association of Philadelphia, GAP, celebrating amateur golf since 1897. By Jersey Man Magazine, it's a Jersey way of life. And by Philly Man Magazine, bringing it to Broad Street. By the Haverford Trust Company, quality is in our DNA. And by Inside Golf's partner since 1998, the Philadelphia Section PGA, experts in the game and business of golf. Take time to thank your local PGA golf professional. Golf has always provided the health benefits of fresh air, focus, and fun. Now let's apply social distancing to the game we love. Stay home if sick and always stay six feet apart and avoid large gatherings on the course. Try thumbs up, or fist pumps, not handshakes or fist bumps. When in doubt, just don't touch and wash your hands. Mark your ball clearly and wear a cloth facial covering when taking a lesson. Finally, respect your fellow golfers and let's be grateful for every swing. Welcome back. Inside Golf now continues as we will take another look at the East Falls Golf Association. Probably among golf associations in the country, it is unique. I don't think of any other neighborhood in the U.S. that can date back its history to 100 years now, actually 101. Last year, Inside Golf was uh, part of the celebration of 100 years in 2019. They had a tournament and it was well attended. And two of the reasons why are with us now again, Chris Kalmeyer, Pete Trenum. Chris kind of considers himself a steward of the history of the East Falls Golf Association. And when you talk about golf history in Philadelphia, there's none better than Pete Trenum, the pro emeritus at St. David's Golf Club in suburban Philadelphia. Gentlemen, always a pleasure to uh, see both of you and especially when we're talking about the East Falls Golf Association. Chris, maybe you could tell a little bit. We're going to see a video that was uh, produced, and it is spectacular, having seen it already. It involves you and Pete. Um, maybe you can just give us an idea of some of uh, your reasons for kind of scratching the surface, producing this video, but more importantly, as an East Falls native, keeping alive the tradition. Sure, absolutely, Harry. Thanks so much. Great to be on the show. So as I think back to last year, I had a chance to uh, meet Pete back in it was last March over a year ago and really get to know Pete um, and learn about all that he knows about the history of golf in general, the history of Philadelphia golf in particular. And it really helped us as the East Falls Committee understand the, the sort of longer history and backstory of our event. I've been playing in the East Falls Open since I was uh, 20, 21 years old. That's that's over 30 years ago. And I've always thought of the beginning of the event as 1920. But in, in getting to know Pete, we really learned that the beginning of the event, the origin of the event, goes all the way back to the birth of golf in Philadelphia and the creation of a golf course, the first golf course in Philadelphia at the Philadelphia Country Club in 1893, uh, when caddies, uh, young kids from East Falls would come across the bridge and caddy for five or 10 or 15 cents a bag. And that really became their gateway into the game. Later, those pros became the, the, um, the founders of this event, which started in 1920. Um, and we're just really thrilled that we've been able to capture that in a way that will um, sustain it for generations to come and really help us get this event to the next, through the next 100 years. Pete, how tough was it to do the research, come up with the pictures for this video we're going to see? 
Well, a lot of these things I found by accident, but I, when I was new in Philadelphia, I used to hear about how Jack Burke Sr. came from East Falls and uh, in the late 1990s, I made myself the historian for the Philadelphia PGA and I started digging into some of these things and just little by little, I found pictures here in magazines or articles and things and it all just, it all just grew. And so then I got a chance to meet Chris and Bill Dalton and started telling them a little bit about some of the things that they didn't know and um, it just all evolved into this video. Well, it certainly has evolved into a uh, spectacular history of a golf association unlike any other, maybe in the world. And it's century old and it's home born right here in the Philadelphia area. The East Falls Golf Association. Let's take a look. To get a sense of place for East Falls, it's important to think of the city of Philadelphia. And like many cities uh, all over the country, all over the world, it's composed of neighborhoods. In Philadelphia, there's nearly 200 neighborhoods, and one of those neighborhoods is East Falls. It accounts for less than 1% of the population of Philadelphia, just to give a sense of the size of the neighborhood. And it sits on the east bank of the Schuylkill River on a hill. It runs up about six or eight blocks with uh, you know, three or four blocks wide. It's very much a middle-class neighborhood, row homes, which Philadelphia is known for. Great place to grow up. And at the top of that hill, it's known in historical context as the, the location of George Washington's encampment during the Revolutionary War. In the 1770s, 1780s, the population of Philadelphia was about 30,000 people. By 1840, 1850, the population had grown to 100,000. And thanks to the Industrial Revolution and the emergence of all kinds of industry here in the Philadelphia area, the population by 1890 or so had grown to a million people. Golf began in Philadelphia, but in 1893, some men from Philadelphia were up in Maine on a vacation, and uh, they saw people playing golf, and uh, it was, they saw how excited these people were about playing golf, and they cut their vacation short, and they came back to Philadelphia. And some of them started a course in Devon, which is uh, on the western suburbs of Philadelphia, and some of them started a course at Philadelphia Country Club. And the first course that got started was at Devon, and uh, the Philadelphia Country Club, because they hired a professional to help them, that got finished first, but the Devon course got started first. And the guys at Devon knew so little about golf, they had a guy on a polo pony hitting polo balls trying to figure out how long the holes ought to be. So that was the beginning. And uh, so 1893, Philadelphia Country Club had a course. It just happened, Philadelphia Country Club, just across the river, the Schuylkill River from East Falls. And, now they had golf, and now they, had, they needed caddies, and there were boys, young boys at East Falls that started coming over to the country club and, and learning the game of golf by caddying there. These guys in East Falls by 1915, 1918, 1919, you have a bunch of guys who are maybe in their 30s and 40s, and they like to get together, and they like to share stories, and a, and a nice a place they like to get together was called the Gunboat, which was a block off of the Schuylkill River at the base of East Falls. And, of course, they would brag about their games, and maybe they would hear about new jobs that they could get, and um, eventually that turned into an idea. And the idea was, you know what? We all think we're good players. Let's, let's get on the golf course and, and figure out who's the best. So the idea of the East Falls Open was hatched at that point. And because they had all caddied at the Philadelphia Country Club, and because it was just a short walk across the bridge and up the hill from where they were drinking at the gunboat, they said, let's do it at the Philadelphia Country Club. And they still had connections at the Philadelphia Country Club. Tom Gribben, who had been a caddy master for years and years, was helpful in getting the tournament and getting the club to agree to host the tournament. So in 1920, they held the first one. And Bill Leach won the inaugural East Falls Open. And at that time, and for the next 17 years, it was held at the Philadelphia Country Club. Now, it's important to note that this is the original Philadelphia Country Club, a golf course that no longer exists, again, built in the 1890s. It was in existence until about 1950. So back then, the course was right across the river, and they held this tournament every year. And for 17 years, they opened this tournament, which is why it was called the East Falls Open, to professionals and to amateurs in the area. And as a result, they attracted all of the best players, some of whom were from East Falls, others of whom were from the Philadelphia area. Mm -hmm. And they had some of the, the best players of that era. So for that 10 or 15 year stretch, it was considered a major among those golf professionals. And that was the first stage of the East Falls Open. 
In 1890s, you know, early 1900s, these young kids, 8, 10, 12, 14-year-old kids, were walking across the bridge of the Schuylkill River, walking up the hill to the Philadelphia Country Club to earn 5 or 10 or 15 cents a bag. And that was really their gateway into golf. And I think it's important to understand, again, at that time, you know, you, you sort of had the working class. Um, in East Falls, there was a mill called Dobson's Mill where 75% of the, the residents of East Falls worked. And these kids, when they were old enough, would get a job there. And oftentimes, that's where they worked their whole life. Caddying was really the way for the working class to access golf. And later, these guys became uh, the head professionals and golf professionals and caddy masters all over the Philadelphia area as Philadelphia golf grew by perhaps the, the teens and 20s when now instead of one or two courses, maybe there's 25 or 30, and all these young caddies grew up to be these great golfers and students of the game, and it was really their way in. Caddying was their way into that, that world. 48 boys came out of that caddy yard and became golf professionals, and they went on to some of them to huge success and some of them you know, decent jobs and a few were caddy masters and some could build golf courses, some could uh, be screen superintendents. They, they learned it all, really. They learned how to make clubs. In those days, you did it all. Really great graduates, you might say. Number one, Jack Burke. He became a head pro in Houston, and uh, that's where Jackie Burke came along. And Jackie Burke won a Masters, won a PGA Championship. Joe Roseman was more of an inventor than a golfer, I think. He wound up in Iowa because of Jack Burke. And then he had pro jobs in Wisconsin and Chicago. But as he was doing this, actually he got into uh, designing golf courses and he built the first lighted golf course that anybody ever knew about in the United States. And he got into making mowers for golf courses. And, and uh, he was very innovative in improving the green mowers. And he wound up with a company called the Roseman Mower Company. And he did a lot of different things, but uh, he's a recognized as a course designer and a great innovator in golf. Bill Leach is another boy that grew up there. And uh, later on, he was the head pro at uh, Overbrook Golf Club, which was down on city line. He finished second to uh, Gene Saracen in the Miami Open one year. In 1928, he was only two strokes behind Bobby Jones in the U.S. Open and was going to play in the last round. and. He shot an 80, and Jones played better, but he, he did finish sixth. So he, he had he had some game, but he was busy being a club pro, too. Bill Byrne was a brother of Ed Byrne that owned the, the restaurant, the, the gunboat. He wound up being an assistant pro at the Philadelphia Country Club, learned how to make clubs, and he was pro at three or four courses in Philadelphia. And he was a founder of the PGA of America. When Johnny McDermott won the U.S. Open in 1911, he gave Bill Byrne full credit for helping him with his game. He was pro at St. Davis from my club from 1914 to 1927. In terms of the event itself and how we can keep going, I think it's important to say that it has evolved over time. We talked about it, what it was like in the 20s and 30s, and shortly after that, the, the format changed. It sort of refocused on East Falls as a neighborhood and a location. The format changed. It focused more on amateur golf. We introduced a flighted format where players would play an A, B, C, D flight, et cetera, based on their playing ability. And that's a format that we continue to use today. We've added a playoff over the years to make it more interesting and dramatic. The playoffs really make it a special event. So in 1980, we introduced an 18-hole playoff, and the top finishers in A, B, C, D flight would come back and play that course about a week later, and whoever had the lowest score in each of those flights would be the winner of those flights. It was all about bragging rights. We had certainly trophies, et cetera. So it's an event that really is the highlight of the year for people that, that play in it. So that was 1980. We introduced that 18-hole playoff. In the mid-'90s, we uh, converted that to a six-hole same-day playoff. And the reason we wanted to do that was to really tap into the excitement of the day. So the event, the format today is everyone comes out, we play a morning round. It's now five flights, A through E, plus a senior flight and a guest flight. A flight, with the scores are typically in the mid to high 70s, low 80s. Then E flight, you know, get guys shooting 100, 105, 110, 115. Mm -hmm. But they have an equal chance of making the playoff. And that's what makes huh. it such a special day. Huh. When we talk about amateur golf, you know, there's a very small percentage of amateur golfers who are top players. Most mm -hmm. amateur golfers 
you know, are all over the map in terms of playing ability and handicap. So we really celebrate that. And if you win your flight, you move up to the next flight. You earn your way up, huh. which means you're giving, you're giving opportunities for other people next year and in upcoming years to make the playoff. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So what that ends up meaning is everybody that competes, and we have people come back year after year after year, and again, it's the highlight of their calendar. They circle it on their calendar every year. What that means is everybody at one point or another has competed in this playoff and they know what it feels like to be a little nervous in front of their friends and try to put it in the hole you know even a three-footer you got to make you know hole out and try to win those bragging rights for next year it's absolutely a generational thing we can look at names on this 1938 john b kelly trophy and recognize last names which are still in existence today in terms of players who are competing in this event that excitement about being there with their friends at a special event, an event that's been around for now a hundred years, and you know, God willing, another hundred years, uh, really makes it special and a real celebration of amateur golf. All right, stay with us. We'll have more with Chris and Pete on the East Falls Golf Association. That's coming up next, right here on Inside Golf. us to keep this thing moving forward. Inside Golf continues. We're talking about the century-old East Falls Golf Association. We just saw a spectacular video kind of tracing the history as it goes back to the original Philadelphia Country Club. Chris Kalmeyer is with us along with Pete Trenum. And let me begin with uh, this question to you, Chris. You've been so intimately involved in the history of this golf association. The production of that video we just saw. Among all the things that you have found out, about the East Falls Golf Association. Is there one thing that you are most impressed with? I haven't really reflect on this sort of how the history has evolved. You know, if you look back to the first 15 or 20 years when it was conducted at the Philadelphia Country Club, the original Philadelphia Country Club, a golf course that no longer exists, it was really a major back then for those golf professionals, those, those former caddies um, who'd grown up to be golf professionals and superintendents and students of the game. Um, you know, so it's really sort of neat that it was a major. The way we think of a major today is a different thing. But back then, it was a pretty big deal. Uh, but over the years, it's really evolved. And today, you know, we call it a real celebration of amateur golf in the sense that it allows for players of all playing ability to really come out, have a great day, compete uh, with their friends and have a chance to hit shots that matter and, uh, you know, come out year after year. So it's really interesting. It, it, it really hasn't been a static thing. It's been something that's evolved and it's really survived. And I, I think it's also important to say that for anything to last uh, 100 years, it requires generations of leadership. And you know, we like to think that we stand on the shoulders of everyone that came before us to keep this thing moving forward. We're very proud of it. You know, Pete, uh, you're an historian of the game, especially in the Philadelphia area. But it, what strikes me, I'm just wondering, it just came to me, is uh, something like the East Falls Golf Association should get more national attention. For instance, I I could see the whole association and its long and very proud history being inducted into the World Golf Hall of Fame. I don't know what category it would be. Did you ever think about something like that? Well, I don't know much about the World Golf Hall of Fame. I'm (laughs) trying to get Johnny McDermott in there who won two U.S. Opens and a Western Open, <laughs> and they don't seem interested. So, uh, yeah, but uh, it is very unique because there's nothing like it. That there's, there's open tournaments that have been run, like the Philadelphia Open has been run, but this is run by a, a, a neighborhood organization, not a golf association or a state golf association. So it's, it's one of a kind. Uh, in the final 30 seconds here, Chris, what kind of feedback are you getting from around the country? Any? I mean, from people who have never heard about the East Falls Golf Association? So it's relatively early days. We released the video less than a month ago, um, and we shared it with our group. We shared it with others. And we've got a lot of positive feedback. Uh, we certainly welcome, you know, the, any opportunity to share the story more broadly. Your idea about the World Golf Hall of Fame 
frankly hadn't thought about that um, at all. That's quite a thought. We'd love to, to get other people, uh, you know, aware of it. Well, I think it's uh, worth the effort. Not that you haven't already. But certainly uh, done so much to promote East Falls Golf Association and the history of golf in Philadelphia. Always a pleasure. Chris Kalmeyer, Pete Trenno. Thanks, gentlemen. Thank you. Thanks, Stay Thanks Harry. More to come here on Inside Golf. Montgomery County offers so much more than just its 50 golf courses. So for this week's A Short Drive, we came to a cool place to beat the heat this summer at Legoland Discovery Center, Philadelphia and Plymouth Meeting Mall. We're here with Mike Taylor, General Manager of Legoland Discovery Center, Philadelphia, to talk about what guests can expect when they come here now with that masks are required and some other changes. Isn't that right, Mike? Thanks it for is. being here today. Thanks, Rachel. Thanks for coming out. So how excited were you guys to be back and, and reopen Legoland for guests and for kids and families? It is great. I mean, we have prepared for reopening for, for the months we've been closed. We've added a bunch of new enhancements, safety features, procedures in place, such as hand sanitizer, social distancing, play sessions, individual bag clean, um, and just done kind of everything to make sure it's a, a good experience, a good time, and, and what you remember us being the ultimate in Derek playground. So what are some other different things that guests can expect when they come here? You have to reserve your time, your block of time to come in here, right? What are some yeah, you have, we have two play sessions a day. We're open Thursday through Mondays right now. Uh, you can book at 10 o'clock to 12.30 or from 2 to 4.30. Uh, both of those times are limited capacity, so it keeps everybody, again, kind of distanced throughout the site. Um, instead of getting your brick where you used to at all the play tables, we now have it individually bagged and cleaned. So you get your own brick, you can play with it. If you want more, you come back. There's different brick for the attraction. As you remember, we have 10 different play tables. So whether it's Friends, Duplo, Arctic, Build and Test, you can go and, and have the same kind of experience you had before. And how about for folks who um, maybe may not remember or haven't been here before, what are some things that are still the same they can expect from Legoland? Um, we have our iconic Philadelphia Miniland behind us with the skyline, all different buildings, kind of goes from day to night, has tons of different interactives which are cleaned very often. Uh, we have our 4D theater which we show two movies right now. Uh, they're about 12 minutes long. They kind of have some special effects in there. And again, same thing, theater is social distance for people. We have our ride when you first come in that you get on, um, you score points, see who gets the higher points and the higher score. Throughout it, we also have our soft play, which you can see in the back, our pirate ship. Uh, kids can still go through that. We do require hand sanitizer before, which we offer. Um, and then uh, we do it on a cleaning cycle in and out. And masks are required, right? Masks are required for all guests above the age of two um, throughout and, and, and all parents. The only place that, that you don't have to wear a mask is over in our cafe. Uh, that's just because the, the tables are all distance far enough apart. You were telling me that some guests were coming and they were a little hesitant and nervous and then you said they felt so much better when they came here, right? You'll see on our website at philadelphia.legolanddiscoverycenter.com we have a whole safety page on all the things we've done with the mask, hand sanitizer, social distancing. Um, and I think people when they actually do come here and they see all the protocols we have in place, they see the team members cleaning, sanitizing, uh, they see employees wearing masks, guests wearing masks, they see that this is, this is a safe environment, clean environment, and it's a, and again, still a good experience for you and, and get the kids out. I know that, that my kids had a bunch of kind of demand to get out and do something, and this was a perfect fit to get them out some energy and also get them back in some normalcy in their life. And it's great because it's summertime, it's hot, it's cool in here, and if you're, you're not going away on vacation, this is a perfect place to bring for a family a little getaway. This is. I mean, most folks right now, I think, are doing staycations. You know, they, it's trying to figure out because you don't know the uncertainty that's out there. And let's go to a place that we know of, a place that we can see what they're doing. And again, our, our site, you can see all the different protocols and procedures we've put in place. So it's a perfect opportunity, especially, as you said, in the summer. It is hot out there right now, and this is the place to kind of be and cool off. Yeah, it's nice and cool in here. Plus, it's just cool to look at. Yes. So yeah. definitely want to have people come and check it out with the kids, with the families. Kids of all ages, right? Not just yeah. little ones. No, 2 to 12 and, and even kids that are a little bit older are perfect to come in. Brothers and sisters, you'll see them. We had just some, some kids the other day that were sitting there, probably 15, 16, building race cars and just as competitive as their little brothers. How about adults? Oh, adults too, yeah. You, it, it is always <laughs> funny to, too to see the guests that come up and say, hey, I need another bag of, of brick and I can tell it's, it's, for, the, it's for the parents. It's That's what we encourage here. We want, we want parents and children to play together and kind of do that creative learning. You know, as I've told you, I have the three young girls at home and nothing more than when I get home is them saying, hey, let's build a castle, let's build this, let's build that. So it is a great time. Sure, I think we all need a little Lego play imaginary time right now. We do, we do. It takes us off to a different area where we can, you know, pretend that we're in a back, you know, back to a little normalcy. All right, well, thanks for having us, Mike. No worries, thank you. Yeah.
Hey, thanks, Rachel. Great idea for uh, a little trip around Montgomery County and Lego land. All right, stay with us. We'll wrap it up here on Inside Golf in just a moment. Well, that's going to do it for this week's edition of Inside Golf. Thanks again to Chris Kalmeyer and Pete Trim. Looking back at the more than 100-year history of the East Falls Golf Association. Coming up in the weeks ahead here on Inside Golf, we're going to be taking a look at some featured events from the Golf Association of Philadelphia. It's the Patterson Cup and from the Philadelphia section of the PGA of America, two events. One of them being the Assistant Pro Championship and also an annual event, the Hyman Open at Huntington Valley Country Club. I'm Harry Donahue. Remember, no matter how bad it's going for you out there, don't pick up. See you next time here on Inside Golf. Inside Golf is presented by Destination Monco Golf. 54 courses, 300,000 yards. Check them out at moncogolf.com. Buy the first tee of Philadelphia. The first tee helps young men and women become better golfers, but most important, better people. Get involved. Visit thefirsttphiladelphia.org. By the Golf Association of Philadelphia, GAP, celebrating amateur golf since 1897. By Jersey Man Magazine, it's a Jersey way of life. And by Philly Man Magazine, bringing it to Broad Street. By the Haverford Trust Company, quality is in our DNA. And by Inside Golf's partner since 1998, the Philadelphia Section PGA, experts in the game and business of golf. Take time to thank your local PGA golf professionals.